Hello everybody, this is Mario Ranchi, brand strategist and founder of Manufacturer. And today we're here again for another episode of Demystifying Brand Jargon. So today we're going to talk about differentiation and what exactly is differentiation. So in the last video we talked about positioning and exactly what is positioning, you know, finding the white spaces in the market by mapping out a matrix and figuring out, you know, what you, where are those white spaces and is also part of you know differentiation however there are other different ways to be different many methods to be different in a market so differentiation the simple thing is you know by the name goes different you know what makes you different so what exactly that you do is it your product is it your service do you bring something to the table no one has ever, you know, brought to the table before? Do you, or do you repackage it in something in a different way? You know, so that's the thing. So there's many ways of going about this, right? But there's a lot of misconceptions on, you know, what is, you know, original, what can be creative, what can, you know, differentiate something or, or somehow, you know. Most people in this world don't have the luxury you know, to be, you know, original, to have an original thing, you know. So it all comes down to you. So what do I mean by that? Well, you are the only one of your kind. The only one out of so many human beings in this world. You are the only one in this world to do exactly what you can do the way you do it, right? So, there are many people out there who may be doing, you know, uh, apps or, you know, cars or, you know, uh, making books, but only you have a certain style, you know, that you own, you know, that is made up of other different influences and other things in your life, but only you bring forward, which is your true essence and that's what I'm trying to get here you don't to be different don't be different it's a kind of a paradoxical thing by trying to be different you're not actually doing anything you know you're actually faking it you're actually you know creating a, an alter ego that doesn't really reflect your true essence let's take for example uh, the essence of a person like Elon Musk or Steve Jobs, right? So it does not matter what industry sector they're in. They're able to make a difference in each proper one. And why do you think that is? Well, one of them is that, like I said, positioning. They know their strengths. So their strengths is constant innovation, you know, constant uh, creating things, you know, for the betterment of society, whatever. That is their strength. And it's also what they love to do, and it's also a good act, and what they get paid the most for. So, you start to see that Steve Jobs and Elon Musk. So, Elon Musk started, you know, with a different company. I don't even know remember the company's name, but there was another company even before PayPal. And then PayPal was the one, you know, that made him big. I think, yeah. And then he moved on to tes Tesla, te Tesla, Tesla, and then SpaceX. And now he's, you know, he's just delving deep into any different sector he wants. But every time he hits a sector, he hits it out of the park. He nails it. You know, same with Steve Jobs. You know, Apple was his main thing. However, he found Pixar. Just because his essence, his true essence was there, you know? And what is an essence? It's what mi truly makes you you, you know? It, what is, it's why you are here. It's why you can go into anything and be like, this is a truth, a universal thing inside of me that, that should, you know, that branches out into many things. So there are many different ways to, you know, create brands. So, in strategy, you have an, an ideal of, you know, uh, you know, differentiation is, so there are many different ways to, you can differentiate with your users. So you find the user 
you know, the unserved tribe, you know, and then you find that unserved tribe, and then you create a product around that unserved tribe. So that is a user-based approach to differentiation. And it's, it's extremely effective because, of course, you know, user starts with the brand, and understanding your users, you, be, you become understanding of, you know, what they want, and by that you can even find, you know, you're not looking for a product, so to say, but you're looking for a person to serve. Uh, so that's one way of doing it. Other ways you can do it is uh, you can completely fabricate it. Uh, it's, it's a bit weird, but, you know, Hagdaz and uh, Super Dry, uh, Hagdaz, uh, created by two guys in the Bronx, uh, no, a guy in the Bronx, uh, and, you know, the name sounds, you know, Danish, but it actually isn't Danish, you know, the, well, it actually is not Danish, it just sounds Danish, you know, and he just thought it was a nice sounding name and that, you know, Danish or, you know, Denmark had an appeal, you know, to that sort of craftsmanship quality of ice cream, you know, to, to Americans. So, here's the thing. So, technically, he's not staying truly authentic to what he's saying. So, he's not completely from a Danish origin. He's not completely from a cultural standpoint of that, of that country. However, in this point, he's just reflecting his true essence of what he believes is a truth, right? For many years, I didn't know that Haggadahs was an actual brand, you know, that wasn't in, in, situated in Denmark. But I believed every single thing of it. And if you're not looking for these stories, you'll never figure it out. Because here's the thing, your brain is just going to accept it as it is. It sounds nice, it looks nice, it's congruent with what, what, what the culture is, you know, then that's a truth for me. That's a truth for the customer, right? It doesn't need necessarily to be truth grounded in the immediate uh, truth of reality. You can make your own reality and manufacture your own brand. Super Dry is another example of that, meaning Super Dry, you know, makes Japanese clothing styles, but you know, is a Japanese clothing style brand, however, made in Britain. So again, no ties to actual Japanese culture, they just make really good things that are congruent with that culture, you know, and people accept it as it is, they accept it as a truth, you know, so you can differentiate in that point of view. You can differentiate with your values, you can differentiate, you know, I won't stand for this, or I will stand for this, you know, Whatever it is that you stand for, you know, this works very well with nonprofits. This works very well, you know, with companies that are trying to, you know, have, are facing something in their industry and saying, you know, no, I will not stand for what, for that is, you know, like, you know, maybe car manufacturers are getting so automated nowadays, everybody's automating their production, you know, one company comes out and it's like, no, we are here for the for for our workers we are here to collaborate we don't think technology should wipe out everybody you know so that's another way of doing that as well so you can also look at trends and the trends you know things that are happening now you know automation you know big data uh, whatever it is that's happening in your industry tech, check out the trends and see if you can find a one that you can ride at that time. You know, see if you can, you know, ride multiple trends and how can you leverage that, you know, on to, to differentiate yourself from others, you know. So you can say, you know, um, I don't have any trends on the top of my head, but environmental friendly is one huge one, you know. What the, maybe your product rides that trend, maybe your service rides that trend, you know, um, automated AI or something, you know, trends that are appearing nowadays, look into that and figure out what, what, what trends you can ride. There are many different ways to differentiate yourself. So there's not just, you know, one way of doing it, you know, make yourself different, make a different product, you know, you can. You know, you can make a different product, but there's just a flexibility of many ways you can repackage and, you know, culture and repackage 
understanding of trends and repackage uh, knowledge inside things, inside companies, and inside services that you start to create this new reality, this new truth, this new differentiation point, you know, for for your users. And it and it's a test and all these examples are testimony of that it works. You know, some approaches work for some different people, some approaches don't work for different people. But don't come with the idea that it's just only creating a different product or only creating a different product. I'm not saying this is an excuse for you to create a crap product. However, you know, I'm not saying that you need to have the most original product on the market. I don't think that you need to have the most best, amazing, you know, product on the market. So, yeah. So that's it. And I will see you in the next video.